Hello, I am Tony Hudson and welcome to Correct Conversations once again. I was invited into this private dressing room by my friend Tom Bergeron and we're catching a moment of his time right before this King of Off the Cuff goes live on Dancing with the Stars. He has a book called I'm Hosting as Fast as I Can, Zen and the Art of Staying Sane in Hollywood. It came out in 2009. I read it, I devoured it, loved it. He it's literally a... devoured it. It <laughs> was did. amazing and w w without even a sauce. <laughs> but today, Tom is going to allow me to pry into a more personal, private side of himself to share with us how he stays calm in the eye of the storm, which what? means oh, fine, fine, live fine, television, fine. right? So basically, yes. I'm going to ask you about some secrets on how you okay. um, have a consciously proactive, preventative lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So thank you for You're welcome. allowing us to come in here. Uh, I wanted to go back in time, first and foremost. I want to ask you... What did you eat as a child? What was what was the fare on the dinner table? Uh, my mother, whom I love uh, very much, if she's watching, uh, was a, a wonderful cook of about five things, and and we would have those five things in uh, in repetition, uh, and it was always sort of you know stand like stuffed peppers, or some uh, macaroni and cheese, and hot dogs and beans, and it wasn't a big vegetable and fruit family. No. Uh, no, it, it wasn't. Um, it, it, it was sort of, we got our carbs growing up. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of carbs. Okay, so that's good to know. So you were basically a typical American family I that had that. I think so, yeah. yeah. So yeah. let me ask you this. Which of these three words would describe the first place that you took control of your life as an adult? Would it be body, mind, or spirit? Uh, that's a really good question. I don't know that... I. I some of they kind of go together in a lot of ways. Yes. Um, I began meditating, oh gosh, over 30 years ago, uh, and have done it uh, sometimes in a very disciplined fashion, mm -hmm. meaning probably twice a day for about 20 minutes. Other times a little looser, like maybe a couple times a week, but always a part of my life. Um, I, I think though that uh, body probably came last because. When I first started earning what I considered serious money in broadcasting yeah. back in, I don't know, early 80s or mid 80s, and uh, I, I, I celebrated by drinking a lot of bass ale, <laughs> which, uh, again, carbs, yeah. um, and, and there are some pictures of me from that time in my, I guess, early to mid 30s, where I, I'm only five, nine and a half, so I didn't have the height for the weight I put on. And I was uh, getting a little roly poly. Um, so, body came last. I okay, think. so what but, age was that when you started mm, meditating? What'd you say? Oh, meditating, I would say 20s in my, my mid to late 20s. All right, and what attracted you to meditation? Well, I'd always been drawn to Eastern philosophy. I was brought up Catholic, and, and that provided uh, more questions than answers for me. I it didn't feel like a good fit. For a number of reasons that we really don't have time to get into, but um, oh, let's uh, go to the door. Let's see who's our mystery guest. Come in. Mystery guest. Hi, we're doing an interview. What do you have for us, Martha? I have wrap gifts. I'm sorry. You have wrap gifts. Wrap what are they? Uh, there's the tumbler. There's the the Dancing with the Stars tumbler. Awesome. Oh. You don't want to be without that. <laughs> and what? And that's Lindsay's. The Dancing with the Stars uh, hoodie. Yeah. Which nice. Geraldo would tell you you probably shouldn't wear. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Geraldo would. Thank you. Very much. You're very would not like this, but I love it. Oh, it's a very interesting, yeah. shiny mm -hmm. fabric as befits a dance show. Yes, and there's, there's thumb holes. There's there are bum holes? What? <laughs> oh, thumb holes. <laughs> so you can uh, hitchhike with no problem. That's right. So that's just all about reacting to whatever happens. That's right. Um, so assuming you might want to edit. <clears throat> um, so I, I was drawn to Eastern philosophy. It felt like a more uh, a more honest, at least to my gut, uh, description of how life in the universe works. Uh, I, I, I wasn't big on the grandfatherly God obsessing about all the white lies I might tell in the course of a day. So your attraction to Eastern philosophy, was there a person, an incident? No. Uh, what was it that got you there? It was really just uh, reading. I think just mm. being disenchanted with what I was being taught was the way things are. Mm. And looking for something that felt more 
real and the interconnectedness of um, life as outlined in Buddhism and Eastern philosophy and Zen uh, really appealed to me. Just it seemed right to me. Certainly when I meditate regularly, I feel that. I mean, it's a very tangible sensation that we're all kind of connected. There, there's a great line that Alan Watts has that we're all God playing hide and seek with himself. And I love that. That is good. That draws me to this question. So if you had to take one word that would describe your relationship to your health, what would that be? Obsessive. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is, especially the older I get, I'm more aware of the passage of time and that I want to be as vital as I can be to, to be in my life. Yes, you just you had know. a birthday. Yeah, yeah. A very young... 57. Yes. 57. Very yeah. young. How old do you feel? Um, I I feel like I, I feel like I'm in better shape in a lot of ways than I was in my 30s. So I don't feel a number per se, mm. but but I would you know. Uh, Gene Hackman had a line. He said, "I feel 18. I look in the mirror and see my grandfather." <laughs> I'm not there yet. Um, but I but I, I guess I I just feel I pr certainly don't feel. 57 no. in the way that I thought 57 would feel when I was younger. Absolutely. That seemed really old to it me. It did, didn't it? And it doesn't feel that way now. No. It feels um, like an odd miscalculation. If you could have any person at all to be a personal life coach, who would that person be? To be a personal life coach? Um, Pamela Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> Can you uh, elaborate? Nothing to do with a well, nice, healthy mojo or anything? No, I really, I'm not a big life coach person. I, I, I've had certainly had mentors in yes. my life, uh, people who have helped me uh, move to different stages, both career-wise and otherwise. But, uh, but I don't think I'd put all that on one person. No. No, I don't, I don't think there's anybody who's um, together enough to and, and I'm, I'm just I, I don't take orders well so if there was a life coach telling me to do X Y and Z I'd probably do X and tell them to fuck off with Y and Z <laughs> okay all right how about this if time money or skill was not a factor what would you implement right now into your healthier lifestyle um, I'd, I'd, I'd play the piano Really? I, I have this image. I'm not, I don't believe in an afterlife. I don't believe that we were here before. Um, however, having said that, I have this image of playing a jazz piano in like an old CD club. And I, it's just, it's this recurrent image. And I would love to be able to sit down at a piano and play jazz. Do you have a piano? piano. No, I don't. That's, that's probably <laughs> the first step. I'm, I'm actually inheriting a piano, and I've actually had the same desire myself. Really? To yeah. Play. I'm very excited about. It. Yeah, but I mean the healthy lifestyle thing. I'm I'm uh, I'm eating better than mm -hmm. I ever did. Uh, I exercise regularly. Mm -hmm. I meditate. Um, Lois and I are coming up on our 30th Sorry. wedding anniversary, and we're still good buddies. Yeah. Um, so all that the kids are knockwood doing well. So you know, there's I I wish I was more. Uh, curious. I'm, I'm so aware of what I don't know. I'm yeah, so well, you only know what you know when you know it. R r well said. <laughs> and there's just such an expanse of things that I, that I am aware that I don't know. We sound like uh, Rumsfeld at a press <laughs> yeah. conference. That's a little scary. But, but I, I wish I had more passion to like learn French and play the piano. I'll get that, that urge and then I'll go, yeah, but then there's always a nap, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it is the age. I yeah, don't yeah. yeah. Being 51, I agree. Yeah. All right, so this along the same lines of what you were just talking about. What do you know now that you wish you would have known then? That most of the shit you worry about doesn't happen. And that you, you're much more equipped to handle the stuff that does happen than you might realize. At least that's been true in my life um, when like Lois's parents uh, each passed at different times it was amazing and we had some other family issues come up over over a period of years th that we were quite able to deal with it 
it, it doesn't mm. make it any less traumatic mm. or any less um, difficult. But there, there are reserves that, that uh, I think we've built over time. And I would look to my mom, who we tease her about worrying about everything all the time, always being worried. And, and, and I said to her once, and she's almost 80 now, I said, a lot of that stuff, did, it, did any of it happen? The stuff you were, well, not really. I said, look at all that energy, all that energy that was consumed. Well, I've heard, I've heard the quote, like, worrying is kind of like sitting in a rocking chair. You know, it gives you something yeah. to do, but you don't go anywhere. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. All right, one last question for you, and I'm sure. going to let you get ready for your, for your evening. If you were an author of a famous quote about health, what would it be? And I know you had one in your book. Well, I don't know how great it was, but I it, liked it. It, thank you. <laughs> uh, just be here now. Three mm -hmm. words, each period after each, for emphasis. But I think that's the foundation of everything. If you're not present in your life, you're not aware of where you are, and thus where you might be going. I think that um, we obsess so much about what's happened before, what might happen in the future, and. And I'm guilty of this too. I mean, years of meditation ha haven't haven't completely cured me of the distractions of the the buzzing in my mind, but <laughs> <laughs> and the other voices for that matter. Let's sit right here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the the quest to be present to me um, it is the wellspring from which all of those other things can can spring. I said spring twice. It's spring a, is bouncy. Spring. It's bouncy. bouncy. It's bouncy. It's like ticker. Um, T D F N. Double G R. Yeah, but I think that's I think that's the truth of it. it, it the more you're aware of where you are, the the more fully you appreciate what it's going to take to go anywhere that yes. you might want to go. Thank you so much. Sure. I appreciate it. Really. Thank you. My pleasure. All right. All right. Fade out. We're gonna hug now. <laughs> You're welcome. I appreciate it. Sure. Yeah, whatever. 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 We're talking. My pleasure. Thank you. She done good, huh? <laughs> she done good. We just popped her interviewing Cherry. <laughs> <laughs>